moments is helping people get jobs. The Social Security Advisory Committee also raises concerns over how job centres deal with recipients of universal credit who are in work. Official advisors to Ian Duncan Smith, the work of Pension Secretary, have called for an urgent, robust review of the government's controversial benefit sanctions for his team, amidst concerns that he's failing to help jobless claimants. The Independent Social Security Advisory Committee says the policy of stopping claimants' dole payments for alleged breaches of benefit should be put on hold until a firm evidence base is re established. Sanctions under which claimants lose benefit payments for between four weeks and three years have come under fire for being unfair, punitive, failing to increase job rates and causing hunger, debt and ill health amongst job seekers. The both ministers say monetary payments are effective in helping people with the job by changing their activity first because it can be used as no hard evidence for this. Urges ministers to consider Trump signing non financial sanctions. It states in its report to ministers, the committee among others, has raised concerns that the increased use of sanctions, not because we believe they are necessary and ineffective, but because we do not know for certain that they are effective, at least in terms of getting people into good quality jobs. We believe that the sanctions regime needs to be tested. The 13th Strong Committee, chaired by former Department of Work and Pensions Permanent Secretary Paul Gray, is appointed by Work and Pension Secretary to provide independent scrutiny of welfare policy decisions. Its members include economist Matthew Oakley, who authored the DWP Commission Evaluation of Sanctions published last year, as well as academics and business professionals. The committee's report also flags up concerns to ministers over highly sensitive plans to impose conditions on recipients of universal credit who are in work. They face the possibility of financial sanctions if they fail to respond positively to job centre encouragement to increase their hours or move to higher paying jobs. He says guidance must be issued urgently to DWP staff on how to deal sensitively with working claimants and their employers. An overzealous drive to get claimants in at full time or better sustainable work without regard or for full recognition of demands of their everyday life would not only jeopardise the relationships but damage the potential for giving people the support they need. In a statement, a DWP spokesman said benefit sanctions are a long standing part of the benefit system and encourage people to engage with the support on offer. We are working closely with with Social Security Advisory Committee and other groups as we as we head to the next phase of delivery to ensure that claimants continue to benefit from better work incentives and simplicity of universal credit. The committee also warns the DWP against an overstrict approach to the issuing of sanctions. It says frontline officials should be allowed to exercise discretion over whether to impose penalties, especially where very vulnerable claimants are involved, such as those with mental health problems or learning difficulties. The report says there are suggestions that the department's default position may have been to deploy a sanction sooner rather than later, whether a failure to com in compliance has been identified, but there have been many voices raised to say that this is inappropriate and that sanctions ought to be a last resort. Initial findings from five major five-year academic research study led by the University of York into the effectiveness of sanctions presented to MPs earlier this month, the 14th of July, reported that despite widespread political support for the increased the key issue of effectiveness is changing and sustaining behaviour remains largely unanswered. The Social Security Advisory Committee's advice echoes the conclusions of a cross-party MPs report in March, which called for a review of the sanctions regime after, it, after concluding it was unfair, punitive and ineffective in helping people in the work. MPs heard evidence from the PCS union that job centre staff were threatened with performance reviews if they did not instigate, instigate sufficient sanctions on claimants, and that managers drew up sanctioned targets for staff claim the DWP denies. Separate evidence from former job centre employees claim staff were encouraged to agitate and inconvenience claimants as 
they fell foul of the rules. They believe their benefits to be stopped. One ex official said unscrupulous staff would target vulnerable claimants, such as those with learning difficulties, with a learning dis disability for sanctions. Although successive governments have tied benefit conditionality over the past 10 years, ministers dramatically escalated the use of sanctions under new rules introduced in 2012. Annual sanctions numbers, which were about 500 days in 2010, saw to over 1 million with a 12 month period of the new rule coming on stream. Latest figures for December 2014 show job seeker allowance sanctions numbers fell to 700,000 as job market conditions improved, though rates expressed as percentage of claimants fell only marginally. On that note, I was at the Word and Pension Select Committee last year. Debbie Abrams, MP, turned round to Ian Duncan Smith and said, Sanctions are killing people, Minister. And Ian Duncan Smith mumbles under his breath, 